Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. So have you ever found yourself out on a hike, maybe you're backpacking, camping, something like that. You're out on the trails and before you know it, all of a sudden, Mother Nature opens up and starts dumping on you. Yeah, well, that's not exactly what's happening to me, but it is definitely dumping on me. You know, I'm not on the trails, kind of making pretend here, but you get the idea. Well, what do you do about it? You have preparations, you have something in your bag to help you kind of weather the storm a little bit. Today's video gives you a little solution, cheap money, and maybe something worth considering. Now we are going to take a look at a couple of products today. Thank you first and foremost to the people at Grit who have provided these products for review. Now you're going to see two poncho tarps here. One in the color army green and another in awning red. We'll open these up, take a look at them, look at the features, pros and cons, and also talk a little bit about how I intend on using these. Now opening this up, I'll try to be kind of careful so I don't accidentally create damage. Pull this thing out of the package here and you'll see once you open this up this is the poncho tarp. Nice slim package overall. Slim profile. A little uh, pouch here with a drawstring and opening this up and sliding it out. This is the actual poncho tarp. Now this is not necessarily straight up like a blaze orange, but it is a nice color orange. They call it awning red, but my eyes show me immediately that this is a shade of orange. So that's nice. It's a good contrasting color to your surroundings, nice and bright. If you wanted to use this in a scenario where you thought you might have some survival purpose, it is nice to have a nice bright color. And so in that regard, this works out very well. This is overall a very light material. It does not necessarily feel heavy to me. Reasonably thin. So overall, it's not bulky, packs up quite small, and would work pretty nicely to slip inside a pack. Now, I don't know about you, but I typically wear cargo pants when I'm hiking. They'd be a little bit lighter than these, but in general, I typically do have some sort of cargo pants. So let's just say the weather was getting a little bit dodgy on me. What I would likely do is take the poncho, have it ready in my cargo pants, and in a situation like this, simply have it ready to go and be able to slip it on in a moment's notice. Now, at this point, at minimum, I'm at least able to maintain myself a reasonable level of dry if I'm using this straight up as a poncho. I mean, it's pretty basic, um, but it is a nice size. I mean, I could sit here almost indefinitely and really not find that I'm getting myself in too much trouble in terms of overall uh, wetness. I mean, I should be able to stay pretty dry here. It's actually large enough that I could certainly be wearing my pack and still have plenty of coverage. And if you look here, I mean, plenty of room for both me and my pack underneath this poncho. So on this tarp, you can see this is the one that they call army green. It is a camouflage color, somewhat like a woodland camouflage. Part of the reason why I refer to this as a tarp poncho is because this does have grommets that have been worked into the corners of this poncho so that you can use it and string it out as a tarp. Now that has some advantages where if you had a situation where you, I don't know, maybe got to a small camp location, someplace where you wanted to take a break, you didn't want to necessarily wear this poncho and you wanted to string this out as a tarp, you can do this. Now these grommets seem to be reasonably well placed, but part of me has just a little bit of concern with grommets like this, especially for longevity, where these can bend, they can pull, and they can actually pull out of the fabric. So in that regard, it may be a little bit of a better design if this had more of like a reinforced tie out on the end or something like that. But at the same time, I do understand why grommets were used. So these will be used in a little bit to string this out and actually set this up like a tarp. Now looking across the seam, the stitching seems to be pretty well done for the most part. I don't see anything that's really loose or fraying or pulling out. The material does seem to be a ripstop material. I can't tell if it's coated. 
It's really hard to say. It does not necessarily seem to be, but I would think that something like this would have to have some sort of a coating in order to maintain its water resilience. Now just taking a quick look, the inside of it does not have the pattern, whereas the outside does. Now there are some snaps located on the sides of the poncho to allow this to snap together. Now they used plastic snaps, and as I'm trying to push these together, they are kind of firm and they don't go together very well. I think this is probably the biggest flaw in the design of this if you intend on using these snaps. Um, maybe they will loosen up a little bit over time but as of right now they are quite firm and I'm having a real hard time getting them to snap together. Now there is two sets of I guess you'd call them the male side of the snaps and just one female. I'm not sure exactly what the intended purpose of that is, but let's just see if I try to snap this one together. Yeah, it's it's really, it's not going very well. These snaps are pretty difficult. I mean, I'm pushing as hard as I can, and I'm having a hard time getting this to snap together. Even if I push it down on the table, I mean, it still does not really fully go together. So the snaps are a little bit lacking in that regard. Now on the hood of the poncho there is a drawstring down by the neck area to allow you to cinch this tight. That's useful for a couple of reasons. First is to get this hood nice and tight around your head, but second is you use this to seal off the hood when you convert this to a tarp. Now there are some seams in the fabric and there is a waterproof tape that's placed over the seams. For a cheap poncho at least that's a good level of detail. So let's get this thing outside, string it up, and we'll see what it looks like as a tarp. So here you see this poncho in camouflage. You can see as the rain comes down, just how it kind of rolls down the tarp. I got a small puddle accumulating here in the hood, but that's something I can just kind of knock out from time to time, and the water just kind of pours off the end. Now I do realize I could do a better job getting this a little bit tighter. I did not necessarily set it up the absolute best I could. But, you know, the reality is if you find yourself in a situation where you have to set this up, you may not have too many opportunities. Now what I did to set this up, basically imagine that I've tied this off essentially to two trees. Now obviously I use my deck here as a means to do the same thing. And then I used a couple of poles here. Now you could either use the tie outs to go to four trees, um, or you could do it kind of like I did here. If you had some trekking poles with you, you could certainly use them. Uh, and if you had a couple of stakes, you know, you can certainly use them to tie this out. Now this has been out here for a little over a half an hour. You can pretty much see how it's acting. I mean, if, like I said, if I did a better job, this water wouldn't be accumulating and pooling on here. But at this point, I'm pretty much not getting soaked. I mean, I have a little bit of water dripping on me, um, but really not too much. And that's pretty much just from what's blowing in from the sides. I mean, this isn't an overly large tarp, but it's certainly enough to keep me mostly dry, get me out of the heavy rain. But if you can tell here, this is heavy rain, just big, heavy, heavy drops. Now, upon initial setup, you'll see that this hood does not necessarily sag down. It is quite possible this will sag down over time. With an, uh, with an abundance of water accumulating around the hood. You can see the water at this point beating down the tarp and it's hitting the hood, which creates a little bit of a damming effect. And then once the water starts to build up over time, this hood will essentially fall down. The hood is tending to kind of push down. Now I see this as a pro and a con. Now hear me out. In terms of a basic shelter and purely from a shelter perspective, it's kind of a con. I mean, you can see the water is just weeping through this hole here. It's pushing through ever so slightly. Now, could I have had this oriented in a different position? Yes, absolutely. If I could do it again, what I would do is I would rotate this entire thing 180 degrees. So the next time I set this up, I am going to make sure for sure this hole is on the downstream side. I mean, if you can tell here, the, uh, behind me it is higher than it is in front of me so I definitely have a downward slope going here and so in that regard the water is just wicking down and coming through this hole so that's very important to note this hole should absolutely be on the downstream side but let's say for example you were using this in a survival situation 
This right here is actually catching a lot of water. That may be considered a pro. Now, again, it entirely depends on what you're trying to do. Now, this is not necessarily getting me wet. I am still dry. I'm sitting here in a nice dry spot and it doesn't bother me. And at the same time, this is capturing water. So you could potentially use this in a survival situation where you need to gather water and it would work pretty well. And again, the water that you do see dripping off of this hood is basically coming and originating from this hole. If you see the water kind of wicking through, that again is entirely my fault on setup. Again, paying close attention to keeping that hole on the downstream end. Now you can see the setup that I got here. Like I told you, I just basically connected it right to my house here. But in reality, that would simulate a couple of trees. You can see I got kind of a poor pitch on this thing. In reality, at this point, I am catching a lot of water. But like I said, that is a pro or a con, depending on what you'd like. I mean, the reality of the situation is you still have plenty of real estate under there to overall stay dry. So as long as you're careful, that shouldn't cause too much of a problem. So overall, that was a pretty decent test. Now I realize I could have ultimately done a better job setting it up, but I did set it up really quick. It was raining on my head. I wanted to get it set up fast so I didn't get soaked. And you know what? That's probably what's realistically gonna happen if you have this out on the trails. So from that regard, I mean, that may be kind of like the result that you'd get if you set that up real fast. Now I also realized there are more than one way that you could potentially pitch that. I just chose that particular way because it's what I had available to me. But further testing may prove that there is another way that works a little bit better. Now just to conclude and wrap this up, obviously here you see the two colors side by side. I see either one of these having really good benefits or advantages. Obviously the camouflage works well if you want to maintain a little bit of uh, an anonymous sort of situation. You want to be a little more undercover and stay a little more subdued. Or if you want this for more of a safety or a survival purpose, this orange would work just a little bit better. Overall, I think the quality for how cheap this is, I mean, this is, uh, you know, sub $20 purchase. In that regard, I think that, you know, the quality is decent. I'm really a little bit bummed out about these snaps. I wish they worked a little bit better. And overall, I'm not entirely sold on these grommets. Only time will tell whether or not these are able to sort of sustain the use and abuse. Now, do I think I'm going to be setting this thing up all the time as a tarp? No, this is kind of like a last ditch effort in a way. So that may be absolutely okay. Um, but I think, you know, for me personally, and this is just how I am, and everybody's a little bit different, but I am definitely a quality versus quantity type of guy. So I prefer to have just slightly nicer attention to details and just a little bit, uh, you know, more finishing and just a slightly nicer product. Even if I spend more money on it, to me, I'm kind of like a one-time purchase and then I'm done type of guy. Uh, so, you know, and I, and I keep my stuff literally forever. I mean, the things that I have, I've had since, uh, you know, I know it sounds silly, but since I bought them, but I mean, you know, that spans pretty much my whole life. I mean, I've had a lot of the same gear forever. And so just to put a little bit more effort into this, I think to have some reinforcement on the corners, kind of more like a tarp and to really, you know, get a, you know, a, a better tie out point might make a difference to have some better snaps, but all in all, pretty cool idea. And I can't necessarily say whether or not I'd prefer to have something like this over a raincoat. I mean, the reality is if I was going to carry a raincoat and uh, it didn't fit over my pack, I would also need to have a um, rain cover for my pack. But with this particular design, you also can use this to cover both yourself and the pack. So it's kind of like a dual purpose thing. So I don't know. I'm not really sure um, if I prefer this necessarily over a raincoat, but it is certainly another option. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.